Oh, you're right, guys. I'm up here today. Fig and toad, fig and toad, frog and toad plot. Getting my um, raspberry trellis in here. So I've done one hole. What I'm going to do. I'm going to use the um, soil auger to make it a bit deeper in the centre. The second one's going up there, right by where that dock leaf is. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I'll do. Ooh. Tougher. Yeah, I'll be right. This is where these um, sharp spades come in handy. Cut through nearly everything. Ooh. I'm only going just over a spade depth as the whole spade. Like I said, I'm going to use the auger to take the centre out. Right, slow speed for this one. End up pulling myself down the centre of the earth. <laughs> in and pull, in and pull, in and pull. far down now that'll do. Okay then, I'm using this um, ooh, rigid post fixing foam by Post Saver. I used it before actually, held my um, greenhouse down. So you've got a strip divided into two different parts of the mix. And what you do is you pull it apart and you've got to mix this for 60 seconds. So what you best thing to do is just stick it over your knee like this. Fifteen. <laughs> just about do it I reckon. Oh it was my scissors. Oh no. Be prepared Steve out. Right, cut the corner off and pour it in the hole. Impact both holes. Here we are, it's expanding now, you see it growing. So let's keep an eye out for about a minute. We'll check the other one. Yep, that's growing nicely. So I'm going to put you down a second, just check the level and the plum. This is hard to do with one hand. <laughs> there we are, it's growing quite fast. I'll spend my time on this one, because the other one's braced properly. There we are. That's coming up quite nicely. I'll have to trim that off a bit because that's going to be over the soil level. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Job done. Okay then, just setting. I'm going to just check that they're level by bringing that across. That's close enough. 
Yeah, that'll do. Because the wires are going to change it when I tension the wires anyway. Yeah, that'll do. Right then. <laughs> I've just taken the supports off there, but solid. That'll do. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, put some strings up. But what I want to do is get the strings level. I don't want them to be a foot, say six inches from there, and six inches from there if they're going to be like this. So I'm going to measure it all up, so bear with me a minute. Yeah, they're a little bit different height, so there's no good doing the height. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put one line in, and then level that up, and then work the rest from there, okay. I've got this kit, let me show you this kit. There's a kit, look, it's um, got a load of turnbuckles in it, and two millimetre wire. Eyes. Oh, Even got the spanner to tighten it all up with. So, right then, back in a sec. Okay, now, so I've made a mark there, which is, it sort of gives a space in a 24, 21, 21. So I'm going to put an eye in here. Just going to pre drill it so we don't damage the, uh, don't split the wood. Just a small pilot hole. And I'm using the supplied eyes because they're stainless. I need the gap in the hook there, the eye, just in case it falls out, you never know. Okay, so loosen the clamp off, turn it upside down so it's easy to get through, push the wire through, wire through the eye, Oop. back through the clamp. He says, make sure it's in, yeah. There we are. I'm trying to do it so you can see, it's a bit awkward, there you are. And just tighten it up, so we'll use the spinner end first. And, do, and then do the tightening with the big end. Give it a bit of leverage. Right then, let's run this wire up there and get a level. Okay, and onto the other post. It's going to be quite level, but it's not going to be Perfect. So, here it is. I can't be right. Right in. Holding that as tight as I can. That is very, very low, isn't it? Right, total change of plan here. I just put that wire up, if you can see it, level. And it is ridiculously... Hmm, it's far too low, this end. Ooh, where are we? And that's not going to make any sense whatsoever, so I'm just going to go back to spaces at the pole, I think. 21, 24, 21, 21 inches. Can you see anything better from over here? See, it's really high the far end by the uh, Budlia bush, and it's dead low this end. There. Let's go have a look at the other side. It'd be easy if this blooming pile wasn't in the way. Yeah, I mean, it's not. I didn't realise it actually. You don't appreciate how much of a slope the thing's on. I'll try and. See, my camera is telling me that that's level, and yeah, because the camera's got the old gyroscope thing on it, hasn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's not going to matter, is it? Because you can't see the wires anyway. If it was wooden, I'd be worrying, <laughs> or worrying, or re replanning, that's for sure. Right, let's get these in. Okay then, on to the, um, the actual turnbuckle end. And the first thing you've got to do is make sure they're fully extended. The ones in my pack came like... Oh. Came like this. 
And if you put them on like that, you'll end up taking it all apart again to get a bit of stretch in them. So, what have we got to do then? Let's put that out of the way a minute. First up, you've got to put the crimp on. I'll put the crimp on the other end as well now. Put the crimp on. Ooh. Through one side of the clamp. A bit of fiddly these over here. Through the turnbuckle, and I'll just leave it on there now to hold it. Back through the clamp. And then we've got to work out the length, so just gonna tighten up a little bit. Oops. Quite a bit of slack here, Steve. Here we are, and I'll do. Okay, we've got the rough length. Need to fit the, uh, I don't know, what it's probably got a proper navel saying that, I don't know what it is. That's got to go in there. It takes the strain off the wire, stops the wire wearing out. So I'll give it a slack on that. There we are. Poke it through the hole. Whew, round there, and we could tighten up again. Yeah, that'll do, that'll do. Tighten the clamp up. <laughs> and before I Tighten it all together properly. I'm going to see if we've got enough slack on it. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's tightening up quite well. I'm going to stop there for now, that'll do. I reckon that'll be alright, you know. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Cool. Alright, next thing then. Find your little crimp. <laughs> you see him? Pass the wire through it. There we are. And I'm going to tie. Just going to crimp it up there, take a bit of slack off the end for it, I think. Ooh. Now, this is quite... Oh, I stained the steel, this is quite stiff. And what I'm going to do, I'm using my um, electrical crimping pliers, and what I'm going to do, I'm actually crimping over the bare end of that, so there's no sharp edges. You'll see what I mean in a second. There we are. See, it's nice and safe, look. And when I was one done. <laughs> right, I'll bring you back when they're all done, guys. Well, that's all done. Um, yeah, that'll be, it'll be all right, actually. I'm quite pleased. Let me just take you over here a second. I get a better view from here. Yeah. It's hard to see thin wires, isn't it? Right then, I've got I've got six raspberries to go in. I've only got three at the moment. And these are um, what do they call them? Oh, hang on. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> these are the two time of Shigana. These are red ones. And I've got three yellow ones as well. God, I've cut my blooming arm on those scratchy on the branches, look. Oh well. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got six. So I'm just gonna work out the spacings for now. I've got three. Do I want red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow? Or would I want red, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow? These three here are red currants. But I'm just gonna put them there for now just to get the spacing. 
So we're about a few hundred mil from the end. I reckon that'll do, you know. Yeah, how confusing there. Let's have a think, let's have a think. Am I gonna go red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow? Red, 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 yellow, yellow, yellow. Now they're all um, the two timer Shaganas, three red and three yellow, so. I don't know. The yellow ones are coming tomorrow. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'm gonna go red, yellow, red, yellow. I mean, it's different, eh? Nobody else is doing that. Yeah, right then. Spade, where are you? Over there. Been doing a lot of hole digging lately. See, can't really see it's a non -dig, no dig plot, can you? <laughs> see, it's not bad soil, actually. Right, let's have a judge of the depth, first of all. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll be perfect. Okay, a little bit of feed. And I'll put some more on top of them as well. A little bit of compost to mix in. Because the hole is quite well broken down in there. Just get it to sit on a little bit of compost as well so it doesn't get a culture shock as it changes medium. Yeah. They're prickly things, these are. I'll do, I'll do lovely. Here we are then. Tie in my first ever raspberry. I've never done this before. Ooh. I'll do that one when it comes a bit bigger. Right, well, water is in the minute. Oh, chuffed a bit. It's my first ever raspberry. <laughs> first ever proper planted raspberry. I don't know if you know about the Saganas. They're, um, they're a two-timer. They grow like a summer raspberry and you tie them up. But when they fruited, you cut them back to the, the wood that hasn't fruited. And you leave, you prune them back to three, four or five stems. And what you do is you take out the weakest as usual, the dead ones are diseased. You take out the thinnest and the thickest and leave all the medium ones, up around four or five. And they'll fruit next year like autumn raspberries. And the new ones from the base will come up again like summer raspberries. So it's like this every year. So you get um, June and July and August and June and July and August. And, I'm looking forward to doing these. I've never, I've never grown them. We've got ordinary raspberries up there, but I just chuck those in a hole in the ground, you know. So like I say, I'll water these in. I'll get these all planted, get them watered in and bring you back. Well, there we are then. That just about concludes how I built my raspberry trellis video. I just put the, uh, the currants in between the red raspberries there just to get the overall effect. They're obviously not going to go there. Like I said, the, uh, the golden ones, golden yellow ones should be coming tomorrow. And I'm not going to make you watch me plant them. Next thing I'm going to do is scrape up a load of that wood chip over there and get the rest of the soft fruit planted in that sort of area uh, with some coming up past the runner beans, but that's for a future video. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Um, look after yourselves and take care. <laughs>